Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve a problem, meeting rooms three, sorry I'm a little late, but we're given an integer n which represents the number of rooms we have, they're numbered from zero to n minus one. We're also given a 2D integer array of meetings. If you've solved the previous two versions of this problem, you're pretty familiar with this setup. Every meeting is a start and time pair. And in this case, they explicitly mention to us that a meeting starts at this time and it ends at this time, but this is kind of non-inclusive. And the reason they say that in case you're confused, suppose we have a meeting like this, starts at time one, ends at time two. We are allowed now to start another meeting from let's say a time two to time three. Like there's no intersection between the end time of a meeting and the beginning time of a meeting if they're at the exact same time. But we're also told that all the start times here are gonna be unique. And that's gonna be important because what they tell us is each meeting will take place in the unused room with the lowest number. So the first meeting, suppose we have a set of meetings, the first meeting should take place in room zero. And so this setup alone is enough to indicate that we should be sorting the meetings array because I don't think that's guaranteed to us. So we sort it and probably we're gonna sort it based on start time because we want to assign rooms in an order that prioritizes the lowest room number. So we'll go through the meetings in order. That's again, the exact same as all the other meeting room problems. And the other two conditions are a little bit more interesting. If there are no available rooms, which is possible, maybe every room is occupied by a meeting. So this kind of indicates to us, we should keep track of some state that tells us which rooms are actually available and which rooms are currently being used. So we'll have to keep track of that in some way. But basically, if there's no available meeting rooms, the meeting becomes delayed until a room becomes free. But this delayed meeting, even though it's not gonna start at this time, the duration of the meeting should still be the same. So suppose we have a meeting that starts at time five, ends at time 10, it had to wait three time units. Therefore, the new meeting, its schedule is gonna be from eight to 13. So the duration stays the same. So this is also something we'll have to keep track of. And obviously we will know if we don't have any available rooms because we are gonna keep track of the state somehow. And when a room be uh, becomes unused, meetings that have an earlier original start time should be given the same, or should be given that room. So uh, this is kind of the last condition that definitely tells you you should go through the meeting rooms or the meetings in sorted order. Now, with all this given to us, what we want to return is the meeting room that held the most number of meetings. So we kind of just have to run a simulation of this and then figure out which room had the most meetings. So uh, in addition to the state that we're going to maintain, we should probably also keep track every time we make a meeting room occupied, we should just increment the count of the meetings for that room. That's not like the difficult part here. Let's kind of expand upon this state that we are going to be maintaining. And let me tell you why we are going to use a heap for this. Remember, they tell us each meeting is going to take place in the unused room with the lowest number. Now, of course, initially, let's say we have these rooms, 0, 1, 2, 3, whatever. Of course, the first meeting is going to go here. The second meeting is going to go here, third here, fourth here. But what happens when now they become occupied? Well, just because they were occupied in this order, maybe this meeting takes really, really long. It's not gonna be free for a while, but maybe this meeting was really short. It's gonna be free, it's gonna be free now. Now, among these, how do we know, and let's say we have a fifth meeting now to schedule, which uh, room is that meeting gonna go in? Probably this one, because a one is free now and two is free, these are occupied. So we have to pick the minimal number among what is available to us in the simulation. So available should be a minimum heap. Therefore, we'll be able to efficiently find the minimums from there. Now, what about the used rooms? How are we gonna keep track of uh, when a room is used? Well, let me tell you, we also want a minimum heap for that because when a room is used, at some point in the future, it will become free. Like I said, we're going through the meetings in sorted order. Suppose we're at a current meeting that now starts at time 10, it's gonna go up until time 15. Okay, and now maybe we have a few rooms available to us, but we also have to check from the used rooms, have any of these rooms now become free? Because suppose that the available rooms are one, or let's say there are three and four, these are the room numbers that are available. But now 
one of the used rooms just became free and the number of that room is one. Of course, we want to schedule this meeting to this, not to one of these because this value is obviously smaller. Okay, so then how are we going to remove from the used rooms? Well, first, let me show you how we're going to store the data. Like I said, it's going to be a minimum heap. It's going to be a pair of values because the room number is actually not enough for us to know what order we should remove the used rooms from. Because remember, if a room is used, it has a meeting that is occupying it. And we care about the end time of that meeting. So it's going to be a pair of values that we store in this heap. And the end value goes first because that's going to determine the order that we pop from the used heap. We want to pop the meetings that are now uh, over, that are finished. So when we pop from this uh, used heap, we are going to check this meeting starts at time 10. Are there any meetings that ended at time 10 or before time 10? If so, we pop them from the used heap. Now, the last edge case is what if available rooms is empty? Okay, well, that's the case where we now have to wait. So instead of waiting, like we're not going to uh, run a simulation where we actually like set the process to sleep or something like that, what we're actually going to do is we're going to pop a single time from the used heap. And of course, we're going to pop the value that has the smallest end value. So suppose that a meeting ends at time 12. Okay, so therefore, the start time of this meeting got pushed till 12. And the end time is going to be 17. Now, how did I calculate these numbers? Of course, the start time just goes here. The end time is going to be the start time plus the duration of this meeting. How do you get the duration of this meeting? I probably don't need to tell you, but it's going to be the end time minus the start time. So that will obviously be five. So that five value got added over here. And then uh, from here, believe it or not, we actually don't need the start time because in the state, I'm not storing the start time of meeting anywhere. We don't care about the start time. We really only care about the end time because that's what's getting pushed to the used heap. The start time is pretty irrelevant. Okay, so now we've kind of arrived at a nice little two heap solution. We've covered most of the edge cases. The rest I'll probably discuss in the code. But what about the time complexity of this solution? Well, first of all, we're sorting the meetings. Remember, let's say the size of the meetings array is M. So sorting that is going to be M log M. Okay, what else? We are pushing and popping to these heaps every single meeting. Like every single meeting is pretty much going to be pushed and popped, right? So M tells us the number of times we're doing a, a push and pop operation. Because if a meeting room is available, then we pop it to schedule a meeting. If a, a meeting is finished, we pop it. So we're going to do that for every meeting. This is how many times. Now, what's the size of the available array or the available heap? Of course, it's n, where n is the number of meeting rooms. We can't have more than n meetings. What's the size of this heap? Used meeting rooms. Of course, we can't add a meeting room twice to the used heap. That doesn't really make any sense. So the max size of each of these is going to be n. So to push and pop from each of those is going to be a log n times operation. And we're doing it this many times. We might be doing it 3m times or 4m times. It doesn't really matter because this will reduce down to M in terms of big O time complexity. So this is how I calculated the big O time complexity. The memory complexity, I think, is just big O of N. Well, I guess not really counting the memory used by sorting, but yeah, this is uh, for these heaps. Okay, now let's code it up. So first thing before you forget is that the meeting rooms are, or the meetings are not necessarily sorted, so we will do that. Python will handle it for us. We don't really need to specify that we're sorting by the start time because that's what Python does by default. So now we are going to initialize our heaps. We will have two of them available and used. Used is initially going to be empty because, of course, we don't have any uh, meeting rooms that are used, and it's going to store a pair of values. I like to add a comment just to remind myself what we're actually storing because that's the most important thing. The end time is going to be first, second is going to be the room number, and here is the available rooms. Probably the variable is descriptive enough, and I'm going to initialize this first by going like this for i in range n. So this will basically create an array that is going from 0 to 1 to 2 to 3. Great. And you might be thinking, well, this isn't a heap, is it? At least not yet. Like maybe we need to run heapify on it to make it a heap. Well, if you think that, you probably haven't taken my data structures and algorithms for beginners course because you will realize that a sorted array actually is a valid heap. 
because the property of a heap is that for every value, its children, or this is a minimum heap, for a minimum heap, every value, its children have to be greater than or equal to it. And that actually is satisfied with a sorted array. So we don't actually need to run the heapify operation. If you do run it, it's not going to cause a problem or anything like that. But understanding how like the underlying data structures are implemented can be pretty useful sometimes. Okay, now let's uh, create uh, the count array. So this is, uh, I'm going to initialize it to zero and it's going to be of size n. And so this is where we're going to count for every number, the number of meetings scheduled. Initially, every meeting room, of course, has zero meetings scheduled. And when we finally return, we want to return the meeting room that had the most number of meetings scheduled. Technically, there could be a tie. Maybe two meeting rooms had the same number of meetings scheduled. And in that case, we're supposed to return the meeting room with a smaller number. And the easiest way to get that is by first take the max of count. This will give us the number of meet the maximum number of meetings scheduled for any given room. And now using this number, it's an integer, we are going to run count dot index. This is basically going to do a linear search within the count array. It'll find the first matching occurrence of this number and it'll return the index of it. And of course, that's what we want to do. We want to find the first uh, meeting room that had the maximum number of meetings scheduled in case there's a tie. So now that we have the entire setup, it's just time to actually run the simulation. So I'm going to iterate over these meetings. So I could do M in meetings, but in Python, you can unpack that right here. So we know meetings is actually a pair, a start end time pair. And so part of the simulation here is that we want to finish any meetings that finished at this start time or before this start time. It's possible that our used heap is non-empty. While that used heap is non-empty and the start time of the current meeting is greater than or equal to first uh, used as a heap, we're getting the first pair in the heap. This is the root of the heap, which is the minimal. It'll tell us which a meeting has the smallest end time. So it'll return a pair. And for that pair, we want the actual end time itself, which is the first value in the pair. So we say uh, get index zero here. So if the start time of the current meeting is greater than or equal to a scheduled meeting right now, then obviously we can say heap Q, heap pop from the used heap. And this will return a pair of values. It'll first return the end time and Second, it'll return the room number. And we don't really need the end time. We don't care about it. This meeting is finished. So first of all, uh, I you reused a variable here. That's a bug. We don't want that. So I'm just going to change this to underscore because we're not going to use it anyway. Now, since this room is no longer being used, probably let's add it back to the available heap. So let's say heap Q dot heap push to the available heap this room number. OK, that's part of the simulation. And now we have two cases. Either a room is available, in which case we should take this meeting and schedule it and uh, basically get a, a room number from available and then schedule this current meeting. That's what we should do. The other case is that no room is available. And in that case, what we want to do is first pop a single time from the used heap and then schedule a meeting. So. You can see we're going to schedule a meeting here and we're also going to end up scheduling a meeting down here as well. So I'm actually going to reverse the order of these two. First, I'm going to check is no room available. If that's the case, then we pop from the used heap. And then down here, we're going to end up scheduling a meeting regardless. So that's why I'm doing it in this order. We kind of uh, remove some of the redundant code. So here, if not available, we have zero rooms available. We say heap Q heap pop one of the rooms from used and that will return to us an end time and a room number and this time we're actually going to need the end time because now we want to calculate we know that we had to delay this meeting so we want to calculate the new start time and the new end time and we found out that we actually don't need the new start time we only care about the new end time so how do i calculate that well i'm going to say the end time is going to be equal to the time that this meeting room this meeting room became available, which is at this time. So it's this plus the duration of the original meeting. 
which is end minus start. So this is the new end time of the current meeting. And uh, since we uh, popped this room, we want to make it available. So let's, for consistency, let's say heap dot heap push to available and push the room number. So now down here, whether a room was originally available or not, we don't really care because we are going to schedule a meeting down here regardless. We know at this point a meeting is a meeting room is available. But okay, we know a room is available. Let's get that room number. Let's say heap q dot heap pop. You can see I am doing quite a few push and pop operations, but it doesn't change the overall time complexity. So here we get the room number of the available meeting, and we say heap q heap push to uh, the used heap and we're pushing a pair of course to this heap we're pushing the end time of the current meeting and the room number and the last thing don't forget i forgot it the first time i think i ran the code was don't forget to increment the number of meetings for every single room once a meeting has been scheduled for that room so this is the entire code and as you can see on the left yes it does and it's pretty efficient if you found this helpful check out neatcode.io especially if you're preparing for coding interviews thanks for watching and i'll see you soon